Okay, so I'm, I'm Inky Waker um, from Obosi in Anambra State in Nigeria. Yes. Um, I started off my work in life as a management consultant working for Unisys and PricewaterhouseCoopers. Oh. Uh, left at some point when I had children. I've got two daughters. Yes. And in the last two years, I opened up, I don't know why I did it, it was crazy, but I opened up a Nigerian restaurant um, in West London, in West Kensington. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Well, I, I, I've had the, 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 I would say, I've had the full opportunity to, 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 to come and dine at your establishment. And it's, it's, it's incredible. I love the fusion cuisine that you make. It's, it's amazing. Um, and I'm not the only one who says this. There are a lot of us who say this. And, you know, during the lockdown, that was not a great time for a lot of us because we, you know, we knew that we could have gone there. But unfortunately, that's not what it is that actually happened. How, how is it now? You're back open now, aren't you? Yeah, we're back open now. So we, um, when the lockdown was lifted, so on the 4th of July, when the Prime Minister said we could open, reopen, um, reopen for um, sitting diners, um, we had already opened two weeks before that. We were doing just takeaways and um, deliveries. Um, so I think initially we, 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 we were doing two days a week because of that sort of fear, you know, just yeah. trying to meet our contact. But we quickly realized it wasn't tenable just doing two days a week. We went up to four. And then since August, we've been open six days a week. Uh, where were you in 1960? <laughs> well, in 1960... <laughs> I don't think I was even a twinkle in anybody's eye because I was born nine years later. Yeah. So I guess I'm the fairies, as my mom would say. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, I, I myself, am, I'm, I'm a 70s baby. So um, early 70s baby, actually, 71 to be in fact. So uh, when, well, the funny thing is when I was compiling these questions, I kept on saying to myself, well, if you're going to ask anybody about this, how would you answer this question? And to be quite honest with you, I was, you know, um, I personally wasn't, wasn't even planned for. So, you know. Um, <laughs> I have young parents anyway. So, exactly. yeah. Um, young. When you've been born Nigerian, because yeah. this is my second question, it's like, when did you hear or know about Nigeria? What, what was your, you know? I, I suspect it's probably primary school. Yeah. Um, we had to sing the anthem every morning. Um, possibly not. Arrival compatriots. Yes, very, I know, just carbon dating me. How else? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we did it in nursery, but I certainly don't remember nursery. But so it would, yeah. it would have been primary school. Yeah. Okay. So um, have you lived in Nigeria? If so, how long did you live in Nigeria for? Yes, I spent the first 15 years of my life in Nigeria. Um, yeah, so. I know, you can't tell I've lived here 35 years. I still sound very Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's since social media, you know, having yeah. to, uh, how do you say, interacting with Nigerians every day, because I, yeah. I remember speaking to a friend of mine who'd moved to India, so yeah. he's a university friend, and we reconnected through Facebook. Yeah. So we were talking, and he said to me, what's happened to your accent? You sound really strange. So I think <laughs> my, my, my accent is now more Nigerian because I'm dealing with a lot of Nigerians, either through yeah. them. Or, you know, the daily well, it's, it's, it's the duality of the life, right? Because, yeah. you know, you're raised one particular way. I myself, um, I was born here in the UK and then went back to Nigeria when I was, the first time I went back to Nigeria, I think I was uh, uh, about five or, okay. or, or six. And then when I was eight, uh, about seven, we moved to Nigeria and there's that duality. So when you're back in Nigeria, everyone's looking at you, what's, what's wrong with this? Are you, but what are you talking about and everything? And then you you then adapt to your environment because you don't want to be ostracized and then you come back here having an accent i remember when i came back here um i think when i started uh college in the 90s here it was um i, I was doing my ond and there was there was a lot of this this change like you know people didn't want you if you didn't sound like them they were always looking at you odd yeah. So, you know, you go back to your, I, I, I don't know, like how you grew up and you start speaking the same way. I don't even have like, uh, cause I grew up in South, Southeast London. Um, I don't have a Southeast London accent. So, you know, there, there are people who look at you like, what, what are you trying to be all posh for? It's like, there's nothing posh about it. It's just the way it is. But when I'm around family, yeah. the narrative changes, you know, like I speak to my family 
in any way that I feel like speaking, you know, and obviously you, you see how that, that changes you and how you change the way you think as well, because you think in a different way when you're back home and you think in a different way here. You know, I, I think it's very important. That's the one that affects other ethnic minorities, actually. You know, the yeah. interesting, uh, I don't know if it does or not. Well, uh, on, on, on odd occasions where um, I've spoken to my West Indian friends, you know, the more time you spend around them, you kind of pick up, you know, words from their lexicon and it ends up being stuff that you, you just throw into conversation when you're with them. It's that whole chameleon narrative. You sort of adapt to environment and stimulus right yeah. so what in what impresses you about nigeria um you know with nigeria I, for me i think there are many many great things about nigeria i love when i come back to nigeria although i haven't been in years mm -hmm. i think for me my favorite thing is the smell of the red soil yeah, yeah that that just takes me back to my childhood Earthy. Um, um, but in terms of what actually impresses me. I think the people, people are so hospitable. Everyone's so happy to see you. Um, the natural beauty, I think we don't sell that enough. Nigeria is a very, very, very beautiful country. Yes. Um, we are blessed with resources from people to the, you know, the natural um, beauty, as I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, we have fertile lands, you know, we've got all the minerals and, you know, we've, we've got, we're a truly blessed country, which is yeah. unfortunately, you know, we've not lived up to our potential. Yeah, well, there is that joke that, you know, God was like, you know, putting all this thing there and everybody was like, well, why are you giving them all of this stuff? Like, watch the people that I put there. <laughs> <laughs> the people are great, on a, mostly great on an individual basis. You know? that, that's the thing that, that, anyway, obviously we can't solve that problem today. No, not at all. Um, the other thing is, uh, what if anything <laughs> um, would you wish to change about Nigeria? Well, it's that. It's going back to that people. But as I say, the people would be the politicians. Yeah. But then, you know, someone said to me, but the, but the politicians are drawn from the people. So it's it's really, I think, maybe our mindset. Yes. As to how we manage our country and how we live within our country is what I would change. Hmm. Because if you take everyone, um, I'm sure, well, I know a couple of politicians, and they're great, you know, they're nice people. And then you think, why haven't she done more? And sometimes it's, I think that some of them may also have been frustrated by the, um, by the environment in which they find themselves. So that, yeah. that, that is the thing I would change actually. It's just the way we've handled the country. We've been blessed with so much and we haven't done much with it. Yeah. That was I, I, I personally, leading on from that, I, I feel that a, um, a, a number of our politicians, like they go in there with good intentions that, you know, but then they encounter sort of the systemic uh, institutional um, way that things are being done and you know as much as they try and change things they they're they're, they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're they're not necessarily able to make the radical changes that they want to so it's like it's change that actually has to affect over a period of time yeah exactly exactly um i I, I hope one day we get to that point whereby we're all feeling you know that the change has worked and will work for us going forward. Yeah, um, I guess in my lifetime, but let's see. Well, yeah, but you never know. We can hope. We can hope. Um, my next question is, is a little bit of a weird one. Um, I, I, there are, it is, what are the comparative differences between Nigeria and Britain in terms of industry? And I'm, I'm uh, sort of framing this construct around your, your, your industry, food. I know, I know you've, you've had different careers and you're, uh, uh, you know, you're very entrepreneurial in spirit, so you can bring across what it is you think, but you know, what, 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 what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so in terms of the hospitality industry, um, I'd say the four, I did write them down because you kindly said this one of the questions. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, actually five. Okay. So there's the government, there's um, obviously customers, um, there's log logistics, and then there's supply, and then there's labor. Those are the five key areas I would say that affect me. So in terms of um, supplies, obviously I have a Nigerian restaurant. I don't think I've plugged it yet. It's called Pitanga. It's Pitanga. It's in West Kensington, people. Please go. 
not only are you going to get incredible food, you're going to get amazing hospitality. Yeah, it's, yeah they, do. they will. So um, obviously, um, I've got a Nigerian restaurant in London, and people often ask me, where do you get your ingredients from? Do you have problems getting them? Generally, I haven't, okay. uh, apart from during lockdown, mm -hmm. um, where for about, I would say about a month, we couldn't get fresh vegetables. That's changed now, it's fine. No, no, it's more than a month. But then it wasn't just Nigerian ingredients that I was having problems ingredients with. Ingredients in general. Ingredients in general. So price of everything doubled, you know, peppers. I think onions stayed the same. Tomatoes. You know, everything yeah. was so much more expensive. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, it's funny because, I, you know, I've worked in Nigeria as well. I spent, um, I think, about four months working in a hotel. Um, okay. I helped set up a kitchen. I was a head chef for about four mm. months. I actually find it easier dealing with my suppliers here than I did in Nigeria. Wow. I find, yeah, um, it's easier for me to, to a larger extent um, maintaining the quality of ingredients I get here mm -hmm. than in Nigeria. You know, I've had, I had to, I, and I think it's again back to that attitude that some of us have of uh, taking like that, managing like that. Mm. Yeah, whereas here, the suppliers that I've established, I know that I can just close my eyes and you know, I'll get good quality ingredients. That's one. Um, in terms of, um, actually, let's not really, I don't know, I might talk about customers later. <laughs> I'm not sure about customers. Labor is, yeah. is always a problem. Yeah. Um, labor is expensive here. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, things you have to be aware of in terms of legislation. Mm -hmm. It's really, really policy. hard. Yeah. yeah, policy. It's hard getting good stuff. Um, yeah, I could tell you stories about staff. You know, you, you put adverts in. And um, I think when, when I first opened, I had, um, I put an advert on the job site and I had, I think, six or seven interviews for chefs back to back. Yeah. I think two turned up. Yeah. And so when I spoke to my butcher about it, I just said to him, you know, he said to me, no, a lot of them are on, on the dole. Mm -hmm. So they just have to show that they're looking for work. They don't actually have to turn up. Okay, yeah. For the interviews. Yeah. So yeah. that's very disheartening. Um, the, and then also, funny enough, trying to get... I'd love to have Niger, more Nigerians working in my restaurant. I don't even think I've ever had... I think I've had one, one but she's at school. Mm. Um, she's at uni, so she's gone back. She, you know, she, she moved out of London. Mm. Um, trying to find Nigerians to work in London, in that industry, is actually very hard. Yeah. Because, you know, they're doing more esoteric things. <laughs> um, now, converse in Nigeria obviously was easier. Labor is cheaper. Of course. But then, um, well, in my case, anyway, we had quite a few, um, the, the work ethics are different. Um, and then also there was, although I'm Nigerian, there was a language barrier, <laughs> even though we were all speaking English. Yeah. So I would say something and they wouldn't understand. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I was training some staff for um, a large organization in Nigeria, yeah? and and one of the, so it was um, it was a five day course, and on the fifth day, what I did was invite the, some executives, and then they were supposed to cook and you know serve. So I was helping them make a salad, and I said, um, "Where's the colander?" And one of them said, "Kola, Madame's looking for you." Colander. <laughs> I didn't think Yoruba, so I didn't know what they were talking about. Kola is Kola. Where's Kola? Yes. I said, Madam, I'm here. I said, No, no, I'm not looking for you. And they said, Madam, I don't understand your intonation. I said, Okay, where is the big thing, the pink bowl that has holes in it <laughs> that you can I, drain items with? I, I, and I said, oh, oh. I said, What do you call it? They said, Perforated basin. The what? Perforated basin. Perforated basin. Yeah, that's what they're actually called. referring to it in the function. Yeah. Wow, that's that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Well, you know, well, I had so many, you know, episodes like that. So that was quite funny. Well, that in, terms, in terms of government, um, obviously, um, I would have to say I've been very grateful to the British government. Mm. They've really helped the hospitality industry um, during this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we got grants, they've reduced the AT, mm -hmm. um, they, for smaller businesses, we don't have to pay rates for one year, you know, business mm -hmm. rates, which is fantastic, and we still get the services. Yeah. Um, talking to friends in Nigeria who have food businesses, mm -hmm. they've not been as lucky as I've been. Mm -hmm. um, the, other thing, the other thing I would say would be, uh, again, around logistics delivery is 
pretty straightforward here. You know, there's systems in place. Yeah. There are companies that do all that. Um, I have a friend that um, sells, um, does little boxes of um, yo-yo um, at small shops in Lagos. And he really struggled during the Lagos lockdown, you know, trying to get supplies, trying to get even bikers because then there were problems with, you know, um, you know when they banned Okada? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was a nightmare that was, just that trying to reach his customers. Yeah. yeah. And that happened to happen around lockdown, which yeah. didn't make anything easy for anybody. Yeah, it was, it was really hard for him at, at the time. So I didn't have any of that. I mean, you know, I could still do it. Even during lockdown, nothing was, the logistics still worked. You know what I mean? Deliveries were working. Mm -hmm. Some things really took longer, but yeah. things worked. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nigeria has varied cultures, traditions due to its three main nations. How do you think this affects Nigeria? Obviously, um, we don't all love ourselves all the time, apart from when football, yeah? Mm -hmm. or, I think it's just and football, any national know. sport that and, and needs us to rally around, we will yeah. do that, yeah. Well, when we're fighting with the Ghanaians over the jollof rice, that's the only time we unite. The jollof Which is a shame. <laughs> it's a and shame we have because... a few stragglers as well. <laughs> so it's a shame because, you know, I think each culture, and I think that's what makes, that's what I love about Nigeria, is just the, so many different nations that they're calling themselves. I, I personally, I think, you know, I said I was going to do politics. I mean, I think um, together we will yeah. be a better country than all the people agitating, you know, for separation. for separation, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think we have a lot of strengths in, in staying together, and you know, not just culture, the food, the, you know, the um, you know various regions. I, I don't know. That's it, it's a uh, yeah. Let's not talk too much about. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you know, I'm doing this uh, this program for uh, the the Horny Man. Have you heard of the Horny Man Museum before? Have you? Been? I've heard. Of it. Wow. I've, I've never been, but um, I, have a, I have a customer that she does, um, she, she basically, before lockdown, she was doing that quite a, quite a lot. So she takes a group of, it's not just her, it's a family group of um, with kids ra ra uh, ranging, it's about 20 kids. And whenever, whenever they finish their little tours, yeah. they come and eat at the restaurant. So ranging yeah. from about four to 15, 16 years old. And the Hollywood Museum is actually one of, their favorites to go to. Yeah, um, the, the actual museum itself is, it's, I, I, would, I would suggest you go because um, they have beautifully collected Nigerian archives. Um, and outside of that, they have the Horniman Gardens and you know, they have the restaurants and various exhibitions. In fact, I think this October, there's an, um, there's an exhibition by, uh, I'm forgetting the photographer's name, but it's about Nigerian weddings. Okay, um, that would be interesting. You know, it's going to be a really interesting one yeah. um, to go to. Uh, moving on swiftly, because uh, I'm also aware of time, but uh, could you name me three famous Nigerians? So, that's a hard one. So, um, I, <laughs> I think the uh, uh, reason I'm hesitating is because you, are, you also are going to ask what it is, what it is that I admire about what them. A, what do you admire about them? But you yeah. can give it to me at the same time if you want. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I tend to admire people that I know as opposed to people that I don't know. Same so, thing. Uh, yeah. So in terms of, so obviously I can't name three because another 50 would be upset. So I, I I'll I pick them into categories. So yeah. music, um, art and literature, Mm -hmm. And then medicine. So I've, I've got friends I really admire in those fields. Mm -hmm. um, reason being, the work that they do is not just within Nigeria. They're recognized globally yes. as experts. I feel like they help um, you know, promote the um, image of Nigeria in a positive mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and some of it has been quite useful for me as a restaurateur. Okay. So I get, Every you know, industry like, needs food. <laughs> So I get these young white kids coming in because they've heard that Wiz Kid or Davido likes jollof rice or equals yeah. to soup, and yeah. they want to try it. They want and to know what it is all about, where yeah. they get in this inspiration. What, what like that. So if anybody ever knows knows Davido and Wiz Kid, tell them thank you from me. I, I've had at least one customers <laughs> of them. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, that's it really. Okay. So no, no one in particular. I really don't want to mention names, but no, 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 that's that's totally fine. I mean, just. 
what you've touched on, because the whole reason why I'm doing these series of mini interviews is to look at the various aspects of Nigerian culture, tradition, influence um, yeah. over the water course. Sorry, there's something in my eye. <laughs> I mean, if I were to choose one, I would say maybe Chipre, uh, Dr. Chipre, you know, who, who's the head of the C Nigerian um, CD, I think it's called CBNC. You yeah. know, he's a world renowned um, expert on infectious diseases. I think he, uh, you know, he's, he, he, you know, he handled the, um, uh, uh, for me, you know, the hmm. COVID. But once, I wasn't actually even ever worried about COVID in Nigeria because I, I, cause they had Chipre. Yeah, they, they, they deal with things really well back home. Yeah. This is a funny thing. The media doesn't necessarily, the Western media anyway, doesn't really necessarily sort of yeah. celebrate that. Yeah. I mean, if we look at what happened during the um, the Ebola crisis and uh, uh, one of my friend's aunties who passed away because she was one of the people who recognized exactly yeah. what happened um, before it actually transpired and um, before it became you know, uh, as urgent as it was that they needed to deal with it. Um, okay, so this question I really like. <laughs> I'm dreading which one it is. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not going in any particular order. Um, what is your favorite <laughs> Nigerian phrase, saying, uh, or proverb? I have loads, right? Oh, so okay. I will start with an equal one. And then okay. I'll tell you which is my favorite one right now. Okay. So there's an evil one called Why uh, Your Kid and actually So slowly, slowly is a way to eat hot food. That kind you know of makes sense, it? right? <laughs> but it, patience is a virtue. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So can you can you repeat that again, please? Slowly for those of us for those of us who don't speak Igbo and would like to use it when we're talking to somebody. <laughs> okay, why your why your say? Okay. Right. Yeah. My and it, I, I, it's, you know, I'd also, you know, you're, you're, so you're eating it slowly. So I guess when you're doing things as well, you know, you do it. In stages, incrementally through process. Yeah. yeah. So I like that one. Mm -hmm. I also like, um, like condition make crayfish then. Well, lighter, lighter. I love that scene. <laughs> you need to be adaptable. Yeah. Yeah. I also like um, waiting concern um, Agbaro with overload. True, because they're all about their business. It's almost like waiting on some fish and rain coats. Yeah, and rain coats. I like that one. And then, but the one I use a lot is ego better. Ego better. Because I've had to be an optimist in starting up this business. You know, I think yeah. you know most restaurants fail within one year. Mm -hmm. Right now, second year, we've had to deal with the pandemic. We're still dealing with that. So yeah. I have to be an optimist. So I always say ego better. And a friend of mine always says, that's not four months prayer. And so that's so <laughs> no, I, I love all the ones you've picked and they do resonate with me because we have like parallels in Yoruba as well. So yeah. it's the same thing. And which actually identifies sort of with Nigeria turning 60, just sort of that whole, the dichotomy and how it's changed over the years. We, we peddle hope, but we live in hope as well, you know, yeah. and it's very important to sort of look at things from that perspective. Um, my next question is, in your, in your opinion, how would you compare Nigeria? How would you, what would you say um, about Nigeria in terms of how it's evolved over the last 60 years, since you've been born, since you've been aware, and since you've interacted with Nigeria's history? Because as Nigerians, we're all very interested in how things has de have developed, and we all have an opinion. In fact, I know Nigeria, is the one country that on the, this planet that I can say has an opinion about itself every single day. <laughs> You've got to get, yeah, Nigeria. I mean, how has it evolved? Um, obviously, I haven't lived in Nigeria for since I was 15. I'm 51 now. Mm. Um, I certainly remember having a very happy, safe childhood. Yeah. We're getting very excited when Nepa took lives. Yes, now <laughs> it was exciting, right? <laughs> because a little, little bit of an adventure to your day. Then we, we, we didn't have to go to sleep in our night clothes. Yeah, and my mother would put a mattress on the um, what do you call it, on the balcony, and spray us with it off. You know? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you'll put coil outside as well to keep the mosquitoes away. 
it was so exciting because it was such a rare occur occurrence. Then. Now it's going around. True. <laughs> That's what I think also we become, I think, more aggressive. Yeah. As a people, I think we become coarser. I think uh, things that, um, I think money without question as source of wealth mm. is celebrated a lot more than it would have been in the past. I think it just become more ostentatious and more flamboyant. Yeah. Those are the negative things. The positive things, I think we've become much more uh, proud about whom we are. Yeah. We've announced to the world that we are here. We are Nigerians, we are here. You yeah. know, I keep laughing, you know, um, it, I say it at least once a week at a restaurant. I say, my God, Nigerians have colonized London. The reason is the number of, uh, like I had a bunch of, um, I don't know, there were different races. I think there was one in the game, one, you know, Arab, a bunch of girls, four girls, very nice girls. Mm. And then one of them said, so when I went to discuss their order with them, uh, one of them, I said, oh, so who's having a goosey soup with um, Pam Lady Ang? She goes, I am. And they said, oh, yeah, she's the expert on Nigerian food. She's one. I said, so what's his name? And they started laughing. <laughs> because, <laughs> what time you've got it. <laughs> and there was another time I had two Italian girls. Yeah. And so they come from Italy. Um, and one of them was like, oh my God, oh, um, my boyfriend. She was talking about different Nigerian food. I checked out about her boyfriend. And her friend, who couldn't, who couldn't speak much English, said, mm. ex boyfriend. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my hearing, I had actually left this lasting impression on her. We do leave an impression where we go, right? I mean, <laughs> So I love that, and I love that we're, you know, I look at the strides people are making with Afrobeat, and, yeah. you know, we're, we're here. We're here to stay. We're and here, and we're proud. Yeah. We're proud. Yeah. All, all of our dynamic and personality traits. We have one minute left, and I'm going to ask you the question that I've been holding off asking for a while. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite Nigerian dish? Oh, it's such a hard one. Um, it depends. I mean, okay. your personal, I mean, I know you have a plethora, of because yeah. you, your your restaurant also is like does fusion and yeah, yeah no but we do traditional food as well I know I know but, yeah um I think you can't go wrong with Nigerian stew I love Nigerian stew you know especially when it's oily I love it oily <laughs> you know I love you're making me hungry now you might see me at a restaurant today stew it's nice I love it thick I use a lot of red, red bell peppers mm -hmm. um, not as many tomatoes so it's really rich it's sweet yeah. and I love it with rice I prefer it don't tell anybody, but I prefer rice and stew to jollof. Um, <laughs> it's all dependent on the stew. The stew makes yeah, the I dish. Very good stew. My stew is amazing. Yeah, I, I, I can testify that your stew is amazing. <laughs> I love it with goat meat or with fried yam. So stew, goat meat stew mm. with boiled rice or yeah. with, um, um, what do you call it, with um, fried yam. With I'm being really naughty with bread, you know, with their gege bread, that's lovely. Ooh. And it's so versatile, Nigerian stew. You can use it with everything. With every single uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's probably my favorite thing. Um, I just want to thank you so much for your time. And you will be seeing me at the restaurant again real soon. Thank you um, very much. I really I'm enjoyed this. I could have talked to you for another hour. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. That's testimony to, you know, a little bit of character coming through. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, no, you did really well. It's, 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 you're a good interviewer, so yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Considering this is not my forte at all, I, I, I take the compliments every time I get them. I interviewed Richard, I'm sorry, Keith, um, okay, Uncle Keith. on Monday. Yeah. yeah. But I actually, I, I went to his place because, you know, I mean, any opportunity to go to Richard's place, the views are spectacular, yeah. the art is incredible. And one day he might be missing those artworks that he had. <laughs> You know, yeah, at least. I haven't seen him since lockdown, but yeah, we, yeah I've yeah. spoken to him. Look, we spoke about you. We spoke about you because we all, we actually been coming to the restaurant. So, yeah. Um, thank you so much for your time. Seriously. Yeah.